How to build every single character in Genshin Impact. In this video, I'll cover which weapons, talents, and artifacts you want to use on every single character, as well as what to prioritize first for the best results. This is an updated version of a guide I put out months ago, and in that video we had just under 50 playable characters, but we're getting close to almost 100 playable characters now. So this is definitely going to be a long video, but I'm going to do my best to give you exactly what you need for each of the character builds, try to keep it short and just give you the most important information. And of course everything will be timestamped so you can go directly to the characters that you want to know specifically how to build. I wanted to make this video for a couple reasons. One, we have almost double the amount of characters compared to when I first posted this video. And two, I could tell this was going to be very helpful for a lot of people, especially when I was doing a lot of account reviews. That being said, it does take a lot to put a video together like this. And if you could tap that like button, it would make me feel fantastic. Thanks so much friends, and let's dive in. Kamisato Ayato. For Ayato, you want to focus on either a 4-piece Heart of Depth set or a 4-piece Echoes of an Offering set. And you can also do a 4-piece Gladiator set. You can also mix and match and do Echoes of an Offering, Gladiator, and Heart of Depth. Just whichever one gives you the best substats. For weapons, you can give him the Black Cliff Longsword, the Black Sword, which is the Battle Pass weapon, or just about any 5-star weapon works as well. If you want to run him in an Electro Charge team, the Lion's Roar is also a good choice. Focus on leveling his Elemental Skill first, then his Elemental Burst, and then his normal attacks. Yai Miko. You build Yai Miko like a sub-DPS, meaning that you use either a 2-piece Thundering Fury, 2-piece Noblesse, or a 4-piece Emblem of the Severed Fate for her. Like most DPS characters, you're going to want to focus on a crit rate or damage headpiece, whichever one you need more of, an electro damage goblet, and an attack sands. For her weapon, either use a Widsith or any 5 star catalyst if you have one. Focus on Yaimiko's elemental skill and burst, and if you plan to use her as a main DPS on the field, then you can level her normal attacks, but if you don't plan on doing that, you can forget leveling the normal attacks altogether. Shenha! Build Shenha with your highest base damage spear at as much attack as possible. She's kind of a niche support and it's completely fine to do a triple attack set on her with an attack headpiece, attack goblet, and attack sands. The more attack she has, the more quill damage it'll give your team. You can put a few different artifacts set on her from Blizzard Strayer if you want the extra crit, but most likely you're either going to do a 4-piece Noblesse or mix set of 2-piece Gladiator, Shimanawa, both of an offering, or Vermilion Hereafter for the 2-piece 18% attack. Focus on leveling Shen He's elemental skill and burst. You don't need to level her normal attacks unless you plan to use her as a carry, even though she's not really designed to be that. Yunjin. Yunjin is a defensive support character who really benefits from a lot of defense scaling, so the 4-piece Husk of Opulent Dreams is a great choice for her. You want to build her focusing on defense, and as she doesn't do a whole lot of damage herself, it's probably fine if you give her a defense headpiece, defense goblet, and a defense sands. For weapons, the Favonia Spear is a good option because it helps recharge energy for your entire team, and because Yunjin's personal damage isn't very high, that gives her a bit of utility. Focus on leveling Yunjin's burst, and then potentially leveling her skill as well, and you can skip out on leveling her normal attacks. Arataki Ito. Arataki Ito is a defense scaling hyper carry, and as such you build him the same as other DPS and hyper carries, the only difference is you give him a defense sands rather than an attack sands. So you want to build him with the crit rate or damage circlet, whichever one you need more of, a geo damage goblet, the defense sands, and use the four piece husk of opulent dream set on him. For weapons, the White Blind is a great choice, and other 5-star Claymores will work as well. Level up Ito's Elemental Skill, Burst, and Normal Attacks, and focus on his Normal Attacks first, then his Burst, then his Elemental Skill, because most of his damage is coming from Charge Attacks. Goro. Goro is all about enhancing Geo characters' damage when they scale off defense, so Ito, Goro, and Noel. You can build Goro on the Husk of Opulent Dreams 4-piece set, but it's actually better to run him on the 4-piece Exile, which is a 4-star set. The Exile set helps regenerate energy for your team whenever Goro uses his own Elemental Burst and gives him a bunch of energy recharge. You're probably going to want to focus on this for him, even though he does scale off defense, 
his damage really isn't that good. So build him with a lot of energy recharge, give him the Favonius Warbow, and call it a day. For Goro, you can focus on leveling up his elemental skill and burst, but they don't need to be that high, they just need to be high enough to give bonuses to those defense scaling Geo characters. Toma! You can try to build Toma for damage, but he doesn't really work very well that way. Instead, it's best to build him with a lot of HP and energy recharge. Give him a Favonius Spear, 2-piece Emblem, 2-piece Tenacity, an energy recharge Sands, and an HP Circlet and Goblet. This will make Toma very tanky. Since his own personal damage is unfortunately pretty low, this is probably the best way to build Toma. Focus on leveling Toma's elemental skill and burst. You can completely ignore his normal attacks because his main utility is as a shielder, and so you'll want both his skill and burst leveled up to take advantage of that shield. Sanganomiya Kokomi. For Kokomi, you want to focus on building her with HP, healing bonus, and attack percent, as she cannot crit, so you don't need to build her with any crit at all. In fact, it's often best to build her as a support without having her on the field for a lot of time, but you can have her as a main carry as well. For her weapons, you either want to give her a Prototype Amber, which is a craftable 4-star weapon, or the Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers so she can support your team. But if you want to keep her as a on-field main carry, you can also put a 5-star weapon on her too. As far as talents go, her Jellyfish is the most important, and then you can also level up her auto attacks and her elemental burst if you plan to use her as a main on-field carry, and if you don't plan on doing that, you don't really need to level those up either. For the artifact set, you want to run a 4-piece Ocean Hued Clam to get that extra healing bonus damage, which can be pretty strong. For the headpiece, you want to run healing bonus or HP if you don't have a good healing bonus set. Goblet, you would want to run Hydro Damage or HP, and Sans definitely HP. The Raiden Shogun Raiden Shogun is one of those characters who kind of wants just about everything. Attack, crit rate, crit damage, and energy recharge. Though out of these, energy recharge is the most important stat. For her weapons, if you have the Skyward Spine, you can equip that on her. However, if you don't have that or the Engulfing Lightning, her 4-star weapon, the Catch, is one of the best that you can have. It's also free, and you can refine it to Refine 5 for free as well. For her talents, you can completely ignore her auto attacks, focus on her skill and her burst, leveling up her burst first, and then making her skill second priority. For the artifact sets, there's only one. You want a 4-piece Emblem of the Severed Fate. And as far as which artifacts to get for the head, you want to focus on crit rate or damage, whatever you need more of. For Goblet, if you're using the Catch, you can run an Attack Percent Goblet. For the Sands, you want to run an Energy Recharge Sands, unless your Energy Recharge is sufficient where you don't need it, and then you can run an Attack Percent Sands. Similarly to the Goblet, you can run either an Electro Damage Percent Goblet or an Attack Percent Goblet. If you use the Catch, it's generally better to run an Attack Percent Goblet but if you use something like the Engulfing Lightning, it's generally better to run an Electro Damage Percent Goblet. Kujo Sara. Kujo Sara is an Electro Buffing character, and she focuses on Elemental Damage Buffing for specifically Electro characters. You could run her either with a 4-piece Noblesse Oblige set, a 4-piece Emblem of the Severed Fate, or a mix set between something like 2-piece Thundering Fury and 2-piece Noblesse or Emblem of the Severed Fate. For weapons, you either want to give her the weapon with the highest base attack you have, or a weapon that grants her more energy like the Favonius Warbow as a good choice. You generally want to build her like a support DPS with either a crit rate damage or crit rate or damage circlet, an electro goblet, and an energy recharge sands. Aloy! Don't build Aloy. But if you really want to build Aloy, just build her like a DPS, crit rate or crit damage on the circlet. Or Peace Blizzard Strayer set will always go well with her, Tax Sands, and Elemental Damage Gop. Though, to be honest, she's a pretty underwhelming character and you get more mileage out of someone like Kaya. Yoimiya! Yoimiya focuses on normal attack, and so you want to focus on that with her build. For the weapon, you want to focus on something like the Rust, which increases normal attack damage. As far as her talents, you want to level all of them, but the elemental burst is not as important as her skill and her normal attacks. 
for her artifact set, the four-piece Shiminawa does work pretty well on her, as well as the four-piece Echoes of an Offering, a new artifact set that came out that increases normal attack damage at a certain percentage. Like most on-field damage dealers, you want to focus on having a crit rate or damage circlet, whichever one you need more of, a pyro damage goblet, and an attack sands. Sayu! Sayu is an animo support healer that can be built a couple different ways, but you want to focus on energy recharge and elemental mastery. A good thing to do with Sayu is to put her on a 4-piece Viridescent Veneer set. Every single animo character will want this, and it's good for Sayu as well. Focus on giving her elemental mastery and plenty of energy recharge so that she can use her burst off cooldown. As far as her weapon, you can use a 3-star weapon. I believe it's called the Bloodstained Greatsword, which gives her elemental mastery. However, a weapon like the Favonius Greatsword for uh, energy recharge is also very good. For talents, her auto attacks don't really matter. Her skill is okay, but you really want to focus on her elemental burst. For head, you can use attack percent if you really want to because her, her heal does scale with her attack. Goblet, you can use elemental mastery, sans elemental mastery as well. And if you are lucky enough to get an elemental mastery in the headpiece, you can use that too. However, if you can't and are just completely bored of farming the Viridus and Venera set, attack percent in any of those three categories will suffice. And if you need more energy recharge, you could always put that in her sands as well. Sato Ayaka. Ayaka is mostly an on-field carry, but can be a very strong support DPS, and so you'll build her like you do most characters in that category, meaning a crit rate or damage circlet, though with Ayaka you're almost always going to want a crit damage circlet, as well as an attack percent sands, and a cryo damage goblet. For her artifacts, you're going to want to do a 4 piece blizzard strayer to give her the crazy amount of crit rate. And for weapons, Black Cliff Longsword is a great option for her, though if you want you could run the Black Sword or a few other options like the Amenoma Kageuchi, which is a 4 star craftable weapon. You could also build her with an attack percent circlet, which is a pretty good option if you have plenty of crit damage already. Basically, Ayaka wants as much crit damage and attack as possible. She doesn't need as much crit because the Blizzard Strayer plus Cryo Resonance will give her a ton already. For Ayaka, you want to focus on leveling her Elemental Burst first, then her Elemental Skill as those will do the most damage, and then you can focus on leveling her Auto Attacks and Normal Attacks because her Charge Attacks do quite a bit of damage as well. Kaidehara Kazuha so, Kazuha is a character that many, many people like, but I think some people kind of build him incorrectly or wrong. Some people build Kazuha as a DPS, and he can do that, but really you want to build Kazuha with as much elemental mastery as possible, on the condition that you can use his elemental burst off cooldown. So, using something like a Sacrificial Sword or a Favonius Sword is really good on Kazuha, and if you have enough energy recharge to use his elemental burst off cooldown, then you can switch to something like an Iron Sting. For his artifact sets, you want to run a 4-piece Viridescent Veneer, like pretty much all other Anemo characters, and focus on Elemental Mastery as the main stats, as well as all the substats when you can get them. So you want Elemental Mastery on the headpiece, goblet, and sands, as well as on any substats on the other pieces if you can. For talents, you don't need to level his normal attacks, just focus on his elemental skill and burst. Eula Lawrence. For Eula, it's all about building physical damage with as much crit rate and damage as possible to hit those big numbers. For her weapon, give her whatever the highest base attack claymore you have is, whether that's a Snow Tomb Star Silver, Prototype uh, Archaic, or any of the 5 star weapons will work on her as well. For her talents, you want to level up basically everything, but her burst is the most important, and then I would do her normal attacks, and then her skill. Her artifacts, you can either do a 2 piece bloodstained or a 2 piece a pale flame for the 50% physical damage bonus, or a 4 piece pale flame. For her head, you want to run either crit rate or damage, whichever one you need. Goblet physical damage and sands attack percent. Yan Fei. 
There's basically a couple ways to build Yanfei. You can build her as a DPS, which is a little bit underwhelming, or you can build her as a support tank, aka shield or tank fei. For her DPS build, you want to focus on giving her a DPS catalyst like the Wid Sith or something like that. For her talents, you want to focus on her auto attacks and her elemental burst and her skill. It's okay, but mostly her auto attacks will be your priority because you'll be doing charge attacks with her. For her artifact set, you either want to focus on the Shiminawa set or the four piece Wanderer set, four piece of either and the headpiece you want crit rate or damage, a pyro damage goblet, and an attack percent sands. For tank fey, it's all about building as much HP on her as possible and this build only works at constellation 4. So if you have constellation 4 and want to try out someone who can give you a crazy shield, tank fey is kind of interesting. For this build, you want to give her a Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayer or Prototype Crescent, either one will work as both provide HP percentage and one allows for more healing and energy regeneration while the other one allows you to switch off of her and give a huge attack buff to whoever you switch into. The talents for Tank Fey do not matter at all. The artifact sets you want to run on her are a two-piece Tenacity of the Millilith for the extra 20% HP and a two-piece Emblem of the Severed Fate for an extra 20% energy recharge. For head and goblet you want to run HP% percent and sands you can either run HP% percent sands or an energy recharge sands just to make sure that you can use her burst as much as you can. Rosaria. Rosaria is often best built as a sub DPS though you can build her physical. I'll give you the sub DPS build. If you run want to run her physical just replace the cryo damage cup with a physical damage cup. So her build should focus on attack and crit damage as she can run the 4 piece blizzard strayer which will give her a lot of crit rates. There is also another build you can use lava walkers on her in a reverse melt team though that's a little more specific so I'll give you a good general build. The weapon you want to run on her is something with either crit rate damage or energy recharge so something like a deathmatch, a favonius lance, or even a dragon's bane in certain circumstances will work very well on her. If you want to run the physical build, then you can run the Dragon Spine Craftable Spear on her as well. As far as her talents, if you use her as an on-field carry, level up her normal attacks, but if you don't use her on-field for more than a couple seconds, don't level those up at all. Instead focus on her elemental skill and burst, prioritizing her burst and then her skill. For the artifact sets, you want to run a 4-piece Blizzard Strayer on her in almost all scenarios. This is because it will give her a massive amount of crit rate and allow you to build more crit damage. So for her circlet, build either crit rate or damage, whichever one you need, though likely it's going to be crit damage. Goblet, you want to build cryo damage, and for sands, attack percent. Hu Tao. Hu Tao is all about building as much HP as possible. The more HP you have, the more damage you do. So the weapons you can use for Hu Tao, you can actually use a 3 star weapon, the Black Tassels, because it gives you HP% percent and crit and is pretty good on Hu Tao, but you can also run her with a Dragon's Bane or a Black Cliff Spear. Those are both good options. And of course the Staff of Homa is amazing for her. As far as talents, you want to level everything up, but you want to prioritize your elemental skill and then your normal attacks and then your elemental burst. For her artifact set, the 4-piece Crimson Witch will work well on her, but if you don't want to farm a 4-piece Crimson Witch, you can do 2-piece Crimson Witch and 2-piece Tenacity until you farm the 4-piece. For her head, you want to run Crit Rate or Damage, whichever one you need. Goblet, you want to run Pyro Damage percent, and Sand, you want to run HP percent. Zhao. The Vigilant Yaksha himself focuses on the best substats that you can get, so that means as much attack, crit rate, and crit damage as possible. For weapons, he doesn't have too many free to play options. The Black Cliff Pole is probably his best one, but you really want to run him with something like the Primordial Jade Wing Spear or another 5 star weapon. As far as talents, you're going to want to level all of them, but you'll focus on your elemental burst and your normal attacks first, and then your elemental skill. The artifact sets. 
He actually has quite a few options. You can run him with two-piece Viridescent Veneer for the extra 15% Anemo damage bonus, or what would be a little bit easier and potentially better would be the two-piece Gladiator, two-piece Shiminawa, two-piece Echoes of an Offering, or two-piece Vermilion Hereafter, basically two-piece 18% attack bonus artifacts. You could also run him with a four-piece Vermilion Hereafter, but if you already have two pieces of Gladiator, Shiminawa, Echoes of an Offering, or another set that's really good, just use those because Zhao wants good substats, doesn't care about set bonuses that much. For the artifacts specifically, for the headpiece you want to run either crit rate or damage, whatever you need more of. Goblet, you'll run a 1, Anemo damage percent, and Sans attack percent. Ganyu! There's a couple different builds with Ganyu, you can either run her Melt or Freeze. And both builds are viable, it just depends on how you want to play them. With Melt Ganyu, you definitely need a shield like Zhang Li, otherwise it's not really advised to play Melt Ganyu, but Freeze Ganyu is much easier and generally easier to build as well. So you want to focus on a lot of crit damage for her as well as attack and some crit rate, just like other on-field carries. For her weapon, the prototype Crescent that you can craft is a really good weapon for both charge attack and for Freeze Ganyu. But you can always use a 5 star weapon like the Amos Bow or Skyward Harp as well. For talents, you want to focus on her elemental skill and burst secondary to her normal attacks. Her charge attacks do a ton of damage, but if you're going to use her in equip swap variants, then you want to focus on her burst first, then her charge attacks, then her elemental skill. For the artifact sets, you can either run her in one of two options a 4 piece Blizzard Strayer or a 4 piece. Wanderers or Shiminawa set. The four piece Blizzard Strayer is for Freeze Ganyu to give her a ton of crit rate, and you want to focus on crit damage, cryo damage, and attack percent on the sands. For the Wanderers or Shiminawa, that's for Melt Ganyu, then you want to focus on crit rate or damage. For the Goblet, you want to focus on cryo percent damage, and for the sands, you want to focus on either attack percent or elemental mastery if you have a good elemental mastery sands it will actually do more than attack percent but it's a lot harder to farm albedo albedo is a character that is focused entirely on defense so you want to give him as much defense as possible so for his weapon you can either use the special event weapon that increases his defense but if you don't have that, the 3 star weapon, the Harbinger of Dawn, will also work quite well on him as you basically switch him in, use E, maybe use Q, and then switch out. He's almost never out of time. So if you're missing the Sinner's Bar Spindle, just use that 3 star weapon as it will work pretty well on him. For his talents, you want to focus on leveling his elemental skill first, then his elemental burst, and you can completely ignore his normal attacks. For the artifacts, you definitely want to use the 4 piece Husk of Opulent Dreams as it gives him both defense percent and geo damage, and for his headpiece, depending on how you're building him, you could build him with crit rate or damage if you have enough of one or the either, or potentially defense percent if you have a really good defense percent headpiece as well. Goblet, you want to focus on geo damage, and Sands, you want to focus on defense percent. Zhang Li. There's a couple ways to build this guy, but mostly you want to focus on HP to get that big juicy shield. For weapons, you can use him as a variety of different weapons, whether you want him as sub DPS or shield bot, but you can use something like Black Tassels to increase his shield, or you can use more DPS focused weapons if you want him as a sub DPS because his meteor does hit good numbers. Though I recommend most people build him as a shield bot as that's very easy. For talents, you want to level up his shield and his burst, so his skill and his elemental burst first. And you can skip on his normal attacks entirely, as they don't really contribute too much, and the scaling's pretty low. For the artifact sets, he has a lot of different artifacts that he can run. Either a two-piece Tenacity of the Millilith with two-piece Emblem of the Severed Fate, or two-piece Archaic Petra, or two-piece this, two-piece uh, that, two-piece Gladiators, two-piece Echoes of an Offering, or a four-piece Tenacity of the Millilith. Basically, Zhongli has got a lot of options, but giving him more HP is always a good thing. For his headpiece, you could run him with crit rate or crit damage or more HP. Goblet, you could run him with geo damage or more HP if you want him to be more shield oriented rather than damage oriented. And Sans again, either more HP 
or attack percent if you want him to be a sub DPS, though some combination of any of those with whatever subsets you have best is probably the way to go. Jin Yan. Jin Yan is a pyro DPS that actually focuses on physical damage and shielding. She is defense scaling and thus you want to build her with defense. For her weapon, typically you want to build her with a physical damage weapon or just any strong 5 star or 4 star weapon you have. For her talents, you want to level her normal charge normal attacks, her elemental skill, and her elemental burst, but typically depending on which role you're going to use her in, you typically want to level her normal attacks first as her skill and burst are kind of lackluster but do find their place. For the artifact set, you could run a two-piece Husk of Opulent Dreams and two-piece of the Bloodstained, or you could run two-piece Bloodstained, two-piece Pale Flame. You've got a, a couple different options with her. Just know that Jin Yan is generally not used very often because she's lackluster and she's been unfortunately neglected by MiHoYo and is still bugged <laughs> from way back when she was released. For her headpiece, you want to run crit rate or damage, whichever one you need. Goblet physical damage percent and Sans defense percent. Tartaglia. For Tartaglia, you want to focus on building him as an on-field carry, even though he's only going to be on the field for about six seconds at a time. For the weapons, you can guild, build him with just about any five-star bow, and the four-star weapon, the Rust, is really good for him as well. For talents, you want to focus on his elemental skill and his elemental burst. You don't really need to level his normal attacks because that's only going to affect the, the bow shots that he does, not the normal attacks that he does in his elemental skill state. Those are completely different. For the artifact set, you want to run him with a four-piece Heart of Depth so he can get that damage bonus for not only Hydro, but on the normal attacks while he's in his elemental skill stance. You want to run him with crit rate or damage on the headpiece, hydro damage goblet, and an attack percent sands. Diona! Diona can be built in a variety of ways, but basically you want to give her enough energy recharge that she can use her burst whenever she needs to, and then focus the rest of her build on HP to give you a stronger shield. For weapons, you can either use a sacrificial bow or a favonius war bow. The idea here is that she will have more energy recharge and can give your team more energy. For talents, you want to focus on her shield first, then her elemental burst for healing, and you don't need to touch her normal attacks because she's not a DPS character. She's 100% utility and support. For her artifact set, you either want to run her as a 4-piece Noblesse Oblige set. That way she can buff your team by giving them an extra 20% attack, or some sort of combination between Emblem of the Severed Fate for more energy recharge, and Tenacity of the Millilith for more HP, or potentially more healing bonus if that's what you find you need as well. So either 4-piece Noblesse Oblige, or 2-piece HP, 2-piece healing bonus, 2-piece HP, 2-piece energy recharge, or energy recharge, healing bonus, whichever one best suits you. For the headpiece, I recommend using HP over healing bonus as it will increase the durability of her shields, Goblet, HP, and Sans either Energy Recharge or HP, whichever one you need more of. Klee! For Klee, you want to give her a DPS Catalyst like the Wood Sith or the Mappa Mare. She also does well with 5 star Catalysts too. For her talents, you want to focus on her normal attacks as she mostly does charge attack damage, and then level her skill and burst. For artifact sets, you either want to focus on the 4 piece Witch set or the four-piece Wanderer's Troop set. Either one is good. If you can't get a good four-piece of either one of those with good substats, then mix and match for a either two-piece Witch set with two-piece Gladiator or Shiminawa, something like that, just to give her better substats. For the headpiece, you're gonna want crit rate or damage. The goblet, you'll want pyro damage. And for the sands, you want attack percent. Venti, everyone's favorite drunk bard. Venti focuses on elemental mastery, but you can also build him like a DPS as both work pretty well. So for a weapon, you want to give Venti either a bow that gives him energy recharge or elemental mastery or a bow like the Skyward Harp for more damage. Talents, completely ignores auto attacks, focus on his elemental burst first and then his skill. 
for artifacts sets. No matter what you do, run him on a four-piece Viridescent Veneer set. It is incredibly good, and this and the this is one of the few times where the bonuses of the set outweigh the substats. Speaking of substats, you either want to run him with Triple Yem, so Elemental Mastery on the head, Goblet, and Sands, or Crit Rate or Damage on the head, Anemo Damage on the Goblet, and an Attack Percent or Elemental Mastery Sands. Both options work, but farming Viridescent can be a giant pain, so kind of mix and match to see what you have. Venti scales very, very hard with Elemental Mastery, but he also does a lot of damage. So building him with crit and attack also works. Kaching. Kaching could be built physical or electro. For physical, you want to build a physical damage goblet with physical artifacts. But for the electro build, build her with a four-piece Thunder Soother or two-piece Thundering Fury, two-piece Gladiator, two-piece Noblesse, something like that. For weapons, just give her whatever weapon has the highest base attack and will affect her the most. Things like the Lion's Roar are good. You could potentially run the Amanoma Kageuchi, even though she doesn't really need the energy recharge that it provides, and the low base attack is not great on her. You could also run her with the Black Sword. The Jade Cutter is a great option. Just about any 5 star works on her as well. As for what to focus on, on the artifacts, look for crit rate or damage on the circlet, look for an electro or physical goblet depending on which way you want to run her, and an attack percent sands. Mona! You can build Mona as a DPS, though most of the time she's used as a thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayer holder, and there's a couple different artifact sets that she can use, both of which are great. So the weapon, a thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayer is perfectly fine on her. There are a few teams where she uses a prototype Amber and becomes a pseudo healer, or you can use a DPS Catalyst on her as well. For talents, you want to focus on leveling her burst first. Once her elemental burst is the highest level you can go, then you want to focus on her skill, and you can mostly ignore her auto attacks. For artifacts, the four-piece emblem of the Severed Fate is incredibly good on her because she also scales Hydro Damage with Energy Recharge, so if she can double dip there, but if that's too much of a hassle, and if you're tired of farming the Emblem Domain and want something else, then 2-piece Heart of Depth, 2-piece Noblesse, or 2-piece Heart of Depth, 2-piece Emblem, 2-piece Emblem, 2-piece Noblesse, those all work. For her headpiece, you want to focus on Crit Rate or Damage, the Goblet you want Hydro Damage, and for the Sands you want Energy Recharge. Chi Chi! Chi Chi isn't better with the introduction of the Ocean Hued Clam set. Chi Chi scales off attack, so you generally want a weapon that has high base attack. However, she also does well holding a weapon like the Favonia Sword to give your team more energy, as she does not generate any energy on her own unless you have Constellation 1. Talents for Chi Chi? You want to focus on her skill and burst. You can ignore her auto attacks, as she does need to auto attack to proc her Fortune Preserver Talisman, but she's not going to stay on the field for too long. Artifact sets for her, generally the best one to run is the Ocean Hued Clam set as Chi Chi heals an incredible amount and can take advantage of the maximum bonus it can give. For head, you want to run Crit Rate, Crit Damage, or Attack Percent, Goblet. I would suggest running Attack Percent here as well, and Sans probably Energy Recharge or Attack Percent. Deluc. Deluc is an on-field hyper carry, and thus you build him as that, so you want crit rate or crit damage on the circlet, elemental damage on the goblet, and an attack percent sands. For a weapon, just give him whatever the highest base attack weapon you have is, whether that's a crafted weapon like the prototype archaic, or a skyward pride, or any other 5 star weapon. For his talents, you want to focus on his skill, then his normal attacks, then his elemental burst. For his artifact sets, the best one for him is the four-piece Crimson Witch. It was tailor-made for Deluc, and it's easily his best artifact set. Next on the list is Jean. For Jean, you want to build her as sort of a pseudo-healer DPS kind of hybrid. 
for her weapon. You can use a variety of weapons, though the Amanoga Kageuchi is a really good choice for her because she can proc its passive pretty, pretty well. For her talents, you want to level her skill and burst, and if you're early in the game, you can level her auto attacks as well, as she can be a carry that also heals the rest of your team, which is very, very useful early in the game. For her artifact set, you can use some combination of the 4-piece Viridescent Veneer or 2-piece Viridescent with 2-piece Gladiator or some combination thereof. Jean mostly wants a bunch of substats and energy recharge to use her burst off cooldown, so just focus on that and don't get too hung up on what set bonus you're going for. For her headpiece, you want crit rate or damage, goblet, you want a Nemo damage bonus, and Sans you want either attack percent or energy recharge if you're not able to keep her burst up often enough. Sucrose. Sucrose is incredibly easy to build because she really only needs two things, that's level and an artifact set. For her weapon, give her the Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers or the Sacrificial Fragments as it has Elemental Mastery, which is the only stat she cares about. For her talents, you can honestly keep them all at level 1. Her damage does not come from the talents, they come from the swirls, and she can auto attack and swirl every couple hits on her auto attacks. So if you don't want to level her talents, spend the more and resources, you do not have to and she will still be really good. Artifact sets, you want to run a 4-piece Viridescent Veneer set on her, no question, no other set but the 4-piece Viridescent Veneer, and you have to focus on Elemental Mastery on every single piece. This will make it a little bit tough, because you'll need Elemental Mastery main stat on the head, Goblet, and Sands, as well as, hopefully, Elemental Mastery on a few substats of other pieces too. The next thing you want to do with Sucrose is take her to level 90, or as high level as you can, once you have the 4-piece Viridescent Veneer set on her, because Swirl is affected by enemies' level in addition to your level, so the higher level you have, the more your Swirl damage will do. Chung Yoon! Chung Yoon can be built in a few different ways, but typically functions best as a burst support. So you could build him with a 4-piece Blizzard Strayer if you wanted, but I think it's better to build him as more burst heavy. So I like to build Chang Yoon with a weapon like the Favonius Greatsword, that way he can refund energy to his team. For his talents, you want to focus on his elemental skill and his elemental burst. His auto attacks are not very good, so you don't need to level those. For his artifact set, you can run him Blizzard Strayer because he is a cryo character and can take advantage of that, though I also like to run him on the Noblesse of Bleach set to give your team a nice 20% attack buff when he uses his elemental burst. For the headpiece, you want to focus on crit rate or damage, goblet cryo damage, and sands, you want to focus on attack percent. Typically for sub DPS's you would focus on energy recharge, but his energy cost is only 40, and his skill generates a lot of particles, so he usually won't have that much trouble keeping his burst up. Noel, another geo damage scaling character that focuses on defense. So you want to build her with defense in mind. For her weapon, there's a variety of weapons that'll work for her, but the White Blind, the craftable 4-star weapon, is tailor-made for her. Also, the Serpent Spine, the Battle Pass Claymore, is very, very good. A few 5-star Claymores will work on her as well. Skyward Pride is nice for the extra energy recharge, and other ones with higher base attack are also nice, like the Red Horn Stone Thresher. For talents, you want to focus on her elemental burst first, and then her normal attacks, and then her elemental skill. Most of her damage is going to come from her burst, and her normal attacks in her burst, so that's why you want to focus on those two first. As far as artifacts go, you can run her either on the 4-piece Husk of Opulent Dreams, the 4-piece Gladiator, or 4-piece Archaic Petra. Any of those will work. Or a 4-piece Retracing Bolide is a potential option as well, though the uptime on that is not great. If you are going to farm any artifacts, I suggest farming the Husk of Opulent Dreams, the new Geo set that gives you defense percent, as it'll be the best farmable option on her. For her headpiece, you want to run crit rate or damage, Goblet, you want to run, want to run Geo damage, and Sands, you want to run defense percent. Bennett! 
One of the most broken characters in the game is actually pretty easy to build as well. For weapons, you want to give them a weapon with the highest base attack possible, as that will give you more attack for your team when he does his elemental burst. But barring a weapon that is really high base attack, just give him a weapon that has energy recharge on it like the Favonia Sword or Festering Desire if you have it. For talents, you want to focus on his elemental burst first, then his elemental skill. You don't need to level his auto attacks if you don't plan to use him as a carry, which he does have the potential to be, but focus on his burst first no matter what, then his elemental skill. For artifact sets, you could run Bennett on a 4-piece Crimson Witch if you want him to be a main DPS or carry. You could also mix and match with 2-piece Crimson, 2-piece Noblesse, 2-piece Emblem. He's got a lot of options. Most people though run him on a 4-piece Noblesse to give your team an extra 20% attack bonus whenever he uses his elemental burst. But I personally run Bennett on a 4-piece Thundering Fury so I can use his E every single second because I run Bennett with Raiden. That's a more specific build though. For his headpiece, you want to run crit rate or damage, goblet you want to run pyro damage, and sands you want to use energy recharge. Fischl! Fischl is an incredibly easy character to build because she doesn't care about any set bonuses, she just wants raw stats. Give her the most crit, crit damage, and attack percent as you can. For her weapon, give her any weapon that is really offensive in mind. She doesn't need a lot of energy recharge as Oz generates a lot of particles. So give her something like the Viridescent Hunt or the Stringless, both really good options for her. For her talents, you want to level Oz as high as you can, aka her elemental skill, and then you can level her elemental burst a little bit, but you honestly don't even need to do that as Oz is the main thing there, and the elemental burst only counts when it initially comes out, and then when it places Oz, it uses that skill, so make sure to level Oz first and foremost. If you want to leave the other talents at level 1, that's fine. For artifact sets, again, she doesn't need any specific one, but you could run 2-piece Thundering Fury, 2-piece Glad, something like that on her. Just again, go for the best substats. So you want to run a headpiece with crit rate or damage, and then the best substats, like the best offensive attack percent, crit rate or damage, the opposite of whatever you have on your headpiece, elemental mastery and energy recharge. Goblet, you want to run electro damage percentage with the best subsets you can and sans attack percent with the best subsets you can again sets on official do not matter ning wong ning wong can run a few different sets but generally you want to focus on building her as either a main dps or a sub dps in either case you want to run her with a high damaging catalyst whether that's something like the dodoko tails or widsith and then for her talents, you want to focus on her normal attacks, her charge attacks, or her burst, depending on how you plan to play her. If you're going to play Ningguang as a burst support, you want to focus on her elemental burst first, and then her elemental skill, and then her charge attacks and normal attacks. The reason you focus on her normal and charge attacks is because if you have a C6 Ningguang, you can use her Star Jades immediately after using her elemental burst. But, if you don't have a C6 Ningguang, you can actually not focus on those at all and just use her elemental burst and skill. If you're going to use her as an on-field main carry, then you want to focus on her normal charge attacks first, then her burst, then her skill, and she gets a lot of damage from her charge attacks. For artifact sets, generally Ningguang wants to run whatever the best subsets are. A 4-piece set usually isn't the best on her. Typically things that are better will be something like a two-piece Gladiator, two-piece Archaic, or two-piece Petra. For artifact sets, you want to run Ningguang with a Geo Damage Percent or Attack Percent, and just give her whatever has the best substats. So if that's a two-piece Gladiators and two-piece Shiminawa, then you can use that. However, she can also use a four-piece Shiminawa in the event that she does get a lot of energy back and you can usually funnel her burst pretty easily, but I would not use a 4-piece shimmy now on her if you don't plan to use her as a main carry. For the headpiece, you want to use crit rate or damage, goblet you want to use geo percent, and sands you want to use attack percent. Jingcho! Our favorite water boy 
has a couple different variations to his build, but generally you want to give him a lot of energy recharge and you want to focus on making his elemental burst do as much damage as it can. Because he has such a long cooldown on his E, a lot of people run the Sacrificial Sword on him and that's a great option, but you can also run the Favonius if you don't have the Sacrificial, and if you don't have either, you could potentially run something like the Lion's Roar as well, though that is more specified for an Electro team or a Pyro team. So this works very well in Ride and Overvape, though most people will elect to run a Favonius Sword or a Sacrificial Sword on him. For his talents, you want to focus on his Elemental Burst first, then his Elemental Skill, and you could ignore his normal attacks. For his artifact sets, he's got a couple options. You can either run a 4-piece Emblem of the Severed Fate, surprise surprise, another character that wants 4-piece Emblem, but he can take advantage of it because he needs high energy recharge already, and the Emblem damage will help him significantly on his Elemental Burst. If you don't want to farm a 4-piece Emblem or don't have a good 4-piece Emblem, then give him a 2-piece Heart of Depth and 2-piece Noblesse or 2-piece Heart of Depth, 2-piece Emblem, 2-piece Emblem, 2-piece Noblesse, any combination of those will work. For his headpiece, you want to run him with crit rate or damage, Goblet, you want to run him with Hydro Damage Percent, and Sands, you want to run him with Energy Recharge, unless you're above about 230% and then an Attack Percent Sands would be fine on him too. Beto. Beto is a sub DPS that, you guessed it, loves the Emblem of the Severed Fate. For her weapon, give her a DPS oriented Claymore, whether that's something like the Wolf's Gravestone, or the Luxurious Sea Lord, or the Prototype Archaic, something that is damage focused. Her talents, you want to level her skill and burst, and you can completely ignore her auto attacks, as her auto attacks are very slow and you don't want to use them, or Beto generally as a carry. For her artifact set, a 4-piece Emblem of the Severed Fate is really, really good on her, but if you don't want to run that or don't have any extra farm, you could always get by with 2-piece Thundering Fury, 2-piece Emblem, 2-piece Noblesse, any combination of those will be fine, though I would recommend building her eventually towards the 4-piece Emblem of the Severed Fate. For headpiece, you want to run her with crit rate or damage. Goblet, you want to run electro damage percent. And sands, either attack percent or energy recharge if you need a bit more, due to having not enough energy recharge on your substats. Xiangling! Xiangling is yet another very strong sub DPS that, you guessed it, wants a 4 piece emblem of the Severed Fate, and so you build her very much in the same way. Give her a high damaging weapon, or you can give her the catch, which, a, which is a free. 4 star weapon obtainable in Inazuma through fishing. It's incredibly good on her and Raiden as well. So if you're not going to give the catch to Raiden because you don't have her, give it to Zhongling because Zhongling will make great use out of it. However, she can also make great use out of a weapon like the Favonius Lance or the Dragon's Mane as well. For her talents, it's all about the Pyronado. Level her elemental burst first, then level her elemental skill, and you can level her normal attacks if you want to as well, if you plan to use her as a DPS, especially early game, she's pretty good. For her artifact set, 4 piece emblem of the severed fate all the way. She is very very energy hungry, Goba has pretty inconsistent pyro particle generation, so more energy recharge and more damage at the same time is very good for her. But you can also run her with a 2 piece witch, 2 piece emblem, and 2 piece noblesse, any combination thereof is also fine. For her artifacts, you want to focus on the headpiece that has crit rate or crit damage on the circlet, pyro damage on the goblet, and energy recharge on the sands, unless you have about 220% or more energy recharge, and then you could give her an attack percent sands as well. And if you have plenty of energy recharge and plenty of attack percent, you can actually switch off of the attack percent and give her an elemental mastery sands, which is also very good for her, though that kind of depends on your overall substats and you can kind of play around and see which one does more damage. Generally, an Elemental Mastery Sands will do a little bit more damage than an Attack Percent Sands, but it is all dependent on your substats, and Elemental Mastery Sands can be a little bit harder to get. Razor. Razor is a hyper carry that focuses on physical damage, very similar to Eula, but unlike Eula, he wants to stay on the field as much as possible. So you want to build him with lots of physical damage, 
attack percents, crit rate, and crit damage. For his weapon, you could use the Snowtoon Star Silver, though he ascends with physical damage so you might actually do better with something like the Prototype Archaic for the attack percent. He also does incredibly well with the Battle Pass weapon, and most 5 star weapons as well. For his talents, you want to focus on his Normal Attack and Elemental Burst first, and then level his Elemental Skill. For the artifact sets, either a 4-piece Pale Flame, or 2-piece Bloodstained, 2-piece Pale Flame will work well, or any combination of Bloodstained and Pale Flame for the physical damage, and Gladiators will work well on him too. He also does very well with a 4-piece Gladiator set, so he's got a lot of options. For the headpiece, you want to focus on crit rate or crit damage, Goblet you want to focus on physical damage percent, and Sands you want to focus on attack percent. He needs barely any energy recharge as he generates a lot for himself, so just focus on as many offensive stats as you can that are not elemental mastery. Barbara! Barbara is very good early game, unfortunately she can't make use of the ocean hued clam set very well, so unfortunately she's kind of fallen out of favor and not like those other healers. However. Barbara can still be useful in a fairly uh, good amount of situations, but mostly she's just going to be your general healer for the early game. For weapons, I would give her a Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayer so she can buff whoever she switches into. You don't really need to use a prototype Amber on her unless you want to use it for someone else down the line because she already does enough healing for when you'll be using her. For her talent, you want to level her skill and burst. Don't bother leveling her auto attacks. People have DPS barber showcases, but they're honestly a giant meme, so don't fall trapped to that. For her artifact set, I think a 4-piece Noblesse is probably the best for her, though you can run an Ocean Hued Clam on her, it just won't be doing as much damage as it would on Kokomi or Chi Chi. For the headpiece, HP% percent is fine, Goblet HP% percent is fine, Sands probably energy recharge or HP percent just to make sure she heals more. Either one of those is fine, but just know that Barbara is basically a HP percent scaling healer, and that's kind of how you want to build her. Lisa! Lisa functions best as a sub DPS and can run a few different options, but generally you want to run her with a Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers to buff the rest of your teammate when you switch out of her. For her talents, you want to focus on her elemental burst and then her elemental skill. Don't need to level up her auto attacks. For the artifact set, you could run her on a 4-piece emblem, 4-piece noblesse oblige, or you could run her with the thundering fury set, 2-piece with 2-piece noblesse, 2-piece emblem, or any sort of mix and match thereafter. You can focus on crit rate, crit damage, or elemental mastery with her. She is able to utilize all of those fairly well. For her headpiece, she wants crit rate or damage, electro percent damage on the goblets, and either energy recharge or attack percent on the sands, just whichever one you need more of. Finally, Kaya. Kaya can be run as a physical DPS or as a cryo main or sub DPS. I'll focus on the cryo DPS, but just know that if you want to run in physical, just go with the physical artifact and a physical damage goblet. So, Kaya normally would run him with the 4-piece Blizzard Strayer with a weapon that either deals a lot of damage because of its high base attack, or one that helps give your team energy like the Favonius Sword. For his talents, you want to level his Burst and then Skill if you're planning to use him as a sub DPS. If you want to use him as a main DPS, level his Normal Attacks, then his Burst, then his Skill. For the artifact sets, run him on a 4-piece Blizzard Strayer to give him the immense crit rate, and then for his artifacts main stats you want a crit damage circlet, a cryo damage goblet, and an attack percent sands. If you want to run physical Kaya, he's actually very free to play friendly because you get the prototype Roncor for free, which is a 4 star weapon with physical damage. You can give that to him, give him either 4-piece Blizzard Strayer for the massive amount of crit damage, which again is probably your best bet, but you could run him with Pale Flame or with Bloodstain for the extra physical damage. Though personally, if I was running Physical Kaya, I'd still do the Blizzard Strayer just for the extra crit. It's really, really helpful. Amber. Amber can be built a couple different ways. 
You can build Amber as an EM support reaction for a character like Hu Tao, or you can build her as a charge attack carry. Either one works, but generally you want to focus on maxing out her pyro damage. So if you want to build Amber, either give her the Favonius Warbow for more energy for your team, something like Elegy of the End actually works really well for her, and those are kind of your main options. She can also run the Alley Hunter, that's a decent bow on her too, but generally you want to focus on giving your team energy. And of course if you really really love Amber, and you have an Amos bow, that'll work really well on her too. For her talents, if you're using her as a carry, focus on her auto attack, burst, and then skill because you want the charge attack damage. If you're using her in a role just for someone like Hu Tao, where you want to apply lots of pyro, focus on her burst, then her elemental skill, and then you could ignore leveling up her auto attacks. For her artifact set, a four piece wander is great for her for the charge attack build, but it's also a pretty decent choice to use a two or four piece wander for her elemental build to give her more elemental mastery. As a sub DPS, you want to focus on things like pyro damage and attack, so you could run two piece witch with two piece wanderers, two piece noblesse, two piece emblem, any of those are fine. For the headpiece, you want to run crit rate or damage, goblets, you want to run pyro damage, and the sands, you want to run attack percent. Yaelon. Yaelon is very easy to build as she's not as dependent on super strong, very rare 5 star weapons as other characters are. But if you do want to run a 5 star weapon, the Aqua Simulacra and Elegy for the End are both really good options. However, I highly suggest using the Favonius Warbow that you get for free from playing the game, or using the 3 star bow called the Recurve Bow, which increases her HP percent, which is where all of her talent damage comes from. And speaking of talent damage, the priority you want to level her skills in is first her elemental burst, then her elemental skill, and you can level her normal attacks if you want to do increased damage with the breakthrough barb, which is her special charge attack, but honestly it's not necessary to do that. For artifacts, you want a four-piece emblem of the Severed Fate set, or any combination of two-piece emblem of the Severed Fate, two-piece tenacity of the Millilith, two-piece heart of depth, or two-piece noblesse oblige. For artifact stats, you want either a crit rate or crit damage headpiece, a hydro damage goblet, and you can also use an HP goblet, and an energy recharge or HP percent sands. HP percent is better for damage, but you also want to be able to use her burst off cooldown, and sometimes you'll need an energy recharge sands for that. Kuki Shinobu there's a few ways to build Kuki Shinobu, but the best ways are either the Hyper Bloom support or full healing support. For Hyper Bloom, the Freedom Sworn is really nice, so is the Xyphos Moonlight, and the Iron Sting is a really good free-to-play option. For artifact sets, you want to run either a 4-piece Flower of Paradise Lost set, or a 4-piece Guild of Dream set, however a 2-piece EM, 2-piece EM for an extra 160 EM with either 2-piece Wanderers, 2-piece Flower of Paradise Lost, or 2-piece Guild of Dreams is also really nice. For the main stats on these artifacts, you want to run Elemental Mastery, Elemental Mastery, and Elemental Mastery. The reason is that Hyper Blooms cannot crit, but the more Elemental Mastery you have, the more damage they'll deal. For her talent priorities, you want to level her skill first, and then her burst, and you don't need to worry about normal attacks at all. Support Kuki is very similar, though you may want to use a Favonius Sword instead of the other sword options, and for her artifacts, you want to run something like Tumnasty of the Millilith, Four Piece Noblesse Oblige, Four Piece Instructors or Exiles, or potentially the Ocean Hued Clam. For the artifact main stats for a full healing build for Kuki, you want to use HP% percent healing bonus or crit rate for the headpiece, and then an HP% percent goblet and HP% percent sands. The talent priority remains the same, you want to use her skill first, and then level her elemental burst. However, between the two, I highly recommend building the Hyper Bloom version of Kuki. It's really, really strong, and Hyper Bloom is just an incredibly powerful reaction. Kuki still heals really well on this set, so I would recommend going this route. Shikinoin Heizo Heizo is an on-field DPS character that can be played in a couple of ways. He can either be an on-field animo DPS, or an EM on-field driver and animo support DPS for other reactions. For the on-field animo DPS, you are trying to build his damage to be as strong as possible, so you want to give him a 5-star weapon or the weapon with the highest base attack you can, or you can give him something like the Wood Sith, or even the Mapamare and Solar Pearl work fairly well with him. 
For artifact sets, the 4-piece Viridescent Veneer is really good, so is the Desert Pavilion Chronicle, or you could just do some combination of 2-piece Animo Damage, 2-piece Attack, or 2-piece EM sets. Just pick two of whichever have the best substats. For artifact main stats, you want to run a crit rate or crit damage headpiece, an animo damage goblet, and an attack percent sands. Hazo's talent priority for on-field animo DPS would be skill first, then his normal attacks, then his burst. If you want to use Hazo as an on-field DPS driver for something like an electro charge team and build him with a lot of EM, then you want to do the same things more or less, give him your highest base attack weapon, or give him something like the map Amare, and then you want to use the 4-piece Viridescent, or potentially the 4-piece Noblesse Oblige, but generally you want to use the 4-piece Viridescent more than anything else. And for his artifact main stats, you want to use Elemental Mastery on the Headpiece, Sands, and Goblets. As an EM driver, the talent priority remains the same. You want to level his skill first, where most of his damage comes from, then his normal attacks, and then his burst. Kale! Kale is a Dendro support character. And as a Dendro support, she's going to want something like the Elegy for the End, which is a 5-star support bow, or the Sacrificial Bow or Favonius War Bow are also good options for her. For her artifact set, you want to give her a 4-piece Deepwood Memories. You could also give her a 4-piece Noblesse Oblige, 4-piece Instructors, 4-piece Gilded Dreams, or 4-piece Exiles, but most of the time, 4-piece Deepwood Memories is going to be your go-to set. For artifact main stat priorities, there's two ways to build Kale. You could build her traditionally, which would be crit rate or crit damage circlets, a dendro damage goblet, or an attack percent or energy recharge sands. The other way to build Kale is going full EM with an elemental mastery circlet, elemental mastery goblet, and elemental mastery sands. You can also mix and match these artifact main stats depending on what you're trying to do. As always, you want to prioritize energy recharge if her energy recharge requirements are not met and she can't use her burst off cooldown. If you then want to prioritize her personal damage, go for dendro damage and crit rate or crit damage. And if you want to prioritize her reaction damage, go for elemental mastery. For her talents, you want to level up her burst first and then her skill and you can ignore her normal attacks. Tanari! Tanari is either an on-field DPS or a quick swap DPS. Tanari does really well with a lot of 5-star weapons, however if you don't have any of those, you can give him an R5 version of the Slingshot, which is a 3-star weapon that's actually really nice on him. For artifact sets, you either want to run a 4-piece Wanderer's Troop or 4-piece Gilded Dream set on Tanari. You also want someone on the team to have a 4-piece Deepwood Memory set for him if he's your main Dendro DPS, but beyond that, you can run a 2-piece Deepwood Memories, 2-piece EM set, or 2-piece attack set. Just choose two that have the best substats overall. For his artifacts, you want to run a crit rate or crit damage circlet, a dendro damage goblet, and an attack percent sands, or an elemental mastery sands if you have one that has good substats on it. And for his talent priority, you want to level his normal attacks first, then his elemental burst, then his elemental skill. Dory! Dory is a support character that is meant to heal your party, and as such, we'll be building her as a support. That means for her weapon, she'll want an energy recharge weapon as she does have a high burst cost, so give her something like the Favonius Greatsword or Sacrificial Greatsword, but you can also give her something like the Craftable Weapon from Inazuma, or the Forest Regalia, which is the Craftable Weapon from Sumeru. Because she is a support character, the artifact sets you want to run with her are also support artifacts, like 4-piece Noblesse Oblige, 4-piece Instructors, or 4-piece Exile. However, you can also run a 4-piece Deepwood Memory if you're using Dory in a Spread or Aggravate team, where the character doing Dendro damage wants to use something like a Gilded Dream set, so Dory can use the Deepwood Memories to do the off-field Dendro Shred. For artifact stats, you want to run a healing bonus or HP% percent circlet, an HP% percent goblet, and an energy recharge or HP% percent sands. There's also another way to build Dory, which is all elemental mastery. So you can do elemental mastery circlet, goblet, and sands, and you can also mix and match. But just make sure she has enough energy to use her burst off cooldown. For Dory's talent priority, level her elemental burst first, and then her elemental skill, and you can completely ignore her normal attacks. Candice! 
Candace is a support character that makes your melee characters have Hydro Infusion. And while Candace certainly looks amazing, her kit is fairly limited and so are her build options. If you do want to build her, make sure to use a Favonius Lance on her or the 3 star weapon, the Black Tassels, to increase her HP. For artifacts, you want to run either a 4 piece Noblesse Oblige to help increase the attack of your entire party or a 4 piece Emblem of the Severed Fate if you want Candace's personal damage to be a little bit higher. As Candace's HP scaling, you can do a couple of different things. You can either run all HP on her from HP Circlet, Goblet, and Sands, or you can try to maximize her personal damage with a crit rate or crit damage piece on the Circlet, a Hydro Damage Goblet, and an Energy Recharge Sands to make sure you have enough Energy Recharge to use her Burst Off cooldown. For her talent priorities, you want to level her Burst first and then her skill, and you can ignore her normal attacks. Sino. There are two major ways to build Sino. The first way is as an aggravate DPS where you're focusing on Sino's personal damage. When you want to maximize Sino's personal damage, you want to give him the best spear that you have with the highest base attack and overall best stats. So that could be something like a various 5 star spears including his signature, the Staff of the Scarlet Sands, but the Primordial Jadewing Spear, Staff of Homa, Calamity Queller, they're all very good. Also, the Deathmatch and the Katane Cross Spear are really nice options. The Deathmatch is the Battle Pass Spear, and the Katane Cross Spear is a craftable spear that you get from an Inazuma Blueprint quest. You can also use the Missive Wind Spear, which is a special event spear, or you could even use the Favonius Lance as it has a high base attack and the energy recharge is still pretty nice. And since you're using Sino on field to maximize his personal damage, the artifact sets you want to run are either a 4-piece Gladiator's Finale, a 4-piece Thundering Fury, or a 4-piece Guild Dream Set. If you don't have a good 4-piece set of any of those, you can run 2-piece 18% attack, 2-piece Thundering Fury for the extra electro damage, 2-piece Emblem of the Severed Fate, or 2-piece Elemental Mastery, whether it's Wanderers, Gilded, or Flower of Paradise Lost. And of course you could also run a 4 piece Thunder Soothers set, but that artifact set is really really annoying to farm and I wouldn't recommend that when there's better options that are a little bit easier to come by. For main stats on the artifacts, you want to run a crit rate or crit damage circlet, an electro damage bonus goblet, and either an elemental mastery or an attack percent sands, just whichever you have the least of, use that as the main stat for your sands. For his talent priorities, you want to level his burst and his skill. You don't actually need to level his normal attacks because the burst damage, while it's considered normal attack damage, it has its own multipliers within its elemental burst, and it's not using the normal attack talent scalings. Which sounds a little bit confusing, but the TLDR is you don't have to level his normal attacks. The other build for Sino is not focusing only on his personal damage, but also activating Hyper Bloom. So this is where you would not only run Sino with a Dendro character, but also an off-field Hydro character, so you can very reliably and consistently proc the Hyper Bloom reaction. If you want to play this build, then the Staff of the Scarlet Sands, his signature weapon, is the best choice here. However, the Dragon's Bane, a 4-star weapon that gives you a lot of elemental mastery, becomes a very, very close contender. After that, the Primordial Jadewing Spear is really good, and the White Tassels is also very good, and that's a 3-star weapon that you probably have already. After that, you can use something like the Moon Piercer, Prototype Star Glitter, or even Favonius Lance for other options. For artifact sets on the Quick Bloom style Sino, you want to run either a 4 piece Thundering Fury, 4 piece Guild of Dreams, or 2 set of 80 Elemental Mastery, 80 Elemental Mastery, or Thundering Fury. So either choose 2 piece EM, 2 piece EM, or 2 piece EM and 2 piece Thundering Fury. You can also run the Gladiator's Finale 4 piece or the Flower of Paradise Lost set, but the other options are a bit better. For this type of playstyle, with Sino proccing a lot of Hyper Blooms, you definitely want to use an Elemental Mastery Sands. For the other artifact main stats, you can look for either an Electro Damage Goblet or an Elemental Mastery Goblet, and for the Circlet, you can use either a Crit Rate or Crit Damage Headpiece or an Elemental Mastery Headpiece. Just make sure to go for whichever one has the overall better substats on them. And for his talent priorities, you want to level his Elemental Burst first, and his skill second, just like when you're running him as an Aggravate DPS. Again, you don't need to level his normal attacks. Nilu, 
Nilu is a special character as she enables a special type of reaction with Bloom and completely changes it. So for this reason you want to play Nilu in Bloom teams and unfortunately she is restricted to playing only with other Hydro or Dendro characters to use her unique mechanic. That being said, Nilu's role is to maximize Bloom damage in teams consisting of strictly Hydro and Dendro characters, so you do actually want to level her to level 90, and we're going to build her to maximize as much Bloom damage as possible. For her weapon, good 5-star options include the Key of Kajni Soot and the Freedom Sworn. There's also really good 4-star options that you can give her, like the Iron Sting, the craftable 4-star Elemental Mastery Sword, or the Tokabu Shigure which is an event weapon that also gives you elemental mastery, and it's the one that looks like the yokai umbrella. If you want a little more support for your team, instead of personal damage for Nilu, you can give her a Favonia sword or the Xyphos moonlight as well. For artifacts, you can run either a two-piece tenacity of the Millilith, two-piece heart of depth, two-piece noblesse oblige, or any of the two-piece elemental mastery sets. You can also run a 4-piece Deepwood Memories on Nilu if you have no one else to run Deepwood Memories in your Bloom team. For her artifact main stat priorities, you want to run an HP Circlet, an HP Goblet, and either an HP Sands or an Energy Recharge Sands. Just make sure you have enough Energy Recharge to use her burst off cooldown. For talents, you actually don't need to level her talents if you don't want to because the talent levels do not affect the Bloom damage Nilu provides to the team, but if you do want to invest just to make a little bit of her own damage better, invest into her skill first, so prioritize leveling her skill and then her burst, but again, you don't need to level her talents very, very high. Nahida! The little Dendro baby has a lot of options when it comes to builds. As far as weapons, almost all 5 stars work on her very well, and the Wood Sith is also very, very nice. She can also make good use out of a weapon like the Solar Pearl, and the Sacrificial Fragments is also really nice on her for giving her a lot of extra EM. The Wandering Evan Star is also quite nice, and you can also use the Hakushin Ring for her, which doesn't make her damage quite as strong, but gives your team a little bit more support. And if you're newer and just got Nahida recently and don't have a lot of 4-star weapon options, the 3-star weapon the Magic Guide is also very good for her. For Nahida's artifact set, you want to run a 4-piece Deepwood Memories or a 4-piece Guild of Dream set, and you can also run a 2-piece Elemental Mastery, 2-piece Elemental Mastery set if you don't have a good 4-piece of Deepwood Memories or Gilded Dreams. As far as the main stats on the artifacts, there's two ways to go about this. If you're building Nahida strictly for Bloom, like let's say in a Nilu Bloom team, you want to give her an Elemental Mastery Goblet, an Elemental Mastery Circlet, and an Elemental Mastery Sands. So all Elemental Mastery on the main stats, if Nahida is in a Bloom team only. If Nahida is in a Quicken, Hyper Bloom, or Burgeon team, aka the rest of the Dendro reactions, you can give her a Crit Rate or Crit Damage Circlet, and you can also give her an Elemental Mastery Circlet. You can also give her a Dendro Damage Goblet or an Elemental Mastery Goblet. And for her Sands, you want to run Elemental Mastery on that here regardless of whether she's in Bloom, or Quicken, or Hyper Bloom, or Burgeon teams. For her talent priorities, you want to level up her elemental skill first, it does the most damage, so it's really important. Then you want to level up her elemental burst, as it's a really nice buff for your entire team. And then you can level up her normal attacks, as they are helpful, but you don't have to go too high with these, you can leave them at 6 or 7, you don't have to go all the way to 9 or 10 with these. However, if you never plan to use Nahida on field, you can ignore leveling up her normal attacks. Layla! Layla is a support cryo shielding character, and the goal for Layla is to give her the strongest shield for your entire team so she can protect them while also increasing her damage where possible. For weapons, the Key of Kajni Soot is very nice for Layla as it gives her a lot of extra HP, and the Primordial Jade Cutter is just a nice stat stick that gives her a lot of crit rate and also a little bit more HP. However, the Favonia Sword is one of the best options for Layla, it is also a 4-star weapon, and it helps recharge your team by giving them more energy. And if you don't have any of those, you can run the Harbinger of Dawn for the extra crit stats. For artifact sets, you want to give her a 4-piece Tenacity of the Millilith, which gives her more HP, more shield strength, and also increases your party's attack percent. 
You can also give her a 4-piece Noblesse Oblige artifact set, or any 2-piece artifact combination of 2-piece Tenacity, 2-piece Blizzard Strayer, or 2-piece Emblem of the Severed Fate. You can also give her a 4-piece Blizzard Strayer or a 4-piece Emblem of the Severed Fate, but those artifact sets aren't quite as good as 4-piece Tenacity of the Millilith or Noblesse Oblige. For artifact main sets, you want to go with a crit rate or crit damage circlet, or an HP circlet for a stronger shield, a cryo damage goblet, or an HP goblet, again for a stronger shield, and an energy recharge sands, or an HP sands for a stronger shield. However, Nilu's personal damage is not spectacular, so you do want to be maximizing her shield, and to do that you'll need a lot of HP with her. For her talent priorities, you want to level her elemental skill first, and then her elemental burst, and you can completely ignore leveling up her normal attacks. Faruzan is a special niche support for characters that want to do on-field animo damage, but don't necessarily care about swirl damage. So she's really good for characters like Zhao, Wanderer, or Heizo, but not so great for other characters like Kazua, Venti, or Sucrose. She also has a very high energy recharge requirement, so that's how we're going to build her. We're going to focus on energy recharge, so you want to give her a Favonius Warbow, which you get for free by playing the game. However, if you have something like Elegy for the End, that's even better. But if you don't have either one of those, or your Favonius Warbo is being occupied by a character like Yulon, then you can give her the End of the Line, which is a 4-star bow you can get for free by fishing in Sumeru. You can also use the Sacrificial Bow, however, you should note that if you're going to use this weapon with her, you can't generate any additional particles for about 6 seconds after you generate the first amount, so using the Sacrificial Bow really isn't advised here. For her artifact set, you can run her with a 4-piece Viridescent Veneer, a 4-piece Noblesse Oblige, 4-piece Emblem of the Severed Fate, 4-piece Tenacity of the Millilith, or any 2-set combination of Emblem of the Severed Fate, and any plus 20 ER set artifact. Again, she is very, very energy recharge hungry, so even if you have to use a rainbow set where you have no set bonuses, but just a bunch of random pieces with high energy recharge, that will be better than trying to force even just a two-piece, two-piece set on her. Like seriously, if you plan to build Farzan with a character like Zhao, you're going to need nearly 350% energy recharge if you want to use her burst off cooldown in endgame abyss situations. For her artifact main stats, you want to go for a crit rate or crit damage circlet, an animo damage goblet, and definitely an energy recharge sands. However, don't beat yourself up on the main stats of artifacts so much, because remember, energy recharge is the most important stat for her. You can only get that as a main stat on the sands, so if you have other pieces like HP or attack percent that end up rolling very heavily into energy recharge substats for your goblet or your circlet, go with those instead. Wanderer. Wanderer or Scaramouche is an on-field DPS that deals animo damage, but doesn't really care about swirling that much, very similar to a character like Zhao or Heizo. For Wanderer, you basically want to give him the best weapon you have, usually a 5-star weapon is what he really wants, however the Widsith is also really nice, you can also use the Solar Pearl, it's not that great as it's hard for him to totally keep up the passive, the event weapon Dodo Coattails is also pretty nice on him, and you can also use something like a Mapamare if you have no other option. For his artifacts, you want to run a 4-piece Desert Pavilion Chronicle, a 4-piece Shiminawa's Reminiscence, or a 4-piece Echoes of an Offering set. You can also mix and match and do a 2-piece Animo Damage, 2-piece Animo Damage, or 2-piece Attack Percent, 2-piece Attack Percent, or just mix and match any of those two sets to give them either double Animo Damage, double Attack, or Animo Damage and Attack. You can also run a Blizzard Strayer, Lava Walker, or a Viridescent Venerer set on him for more specialized teams if you're using him with a Freeze team or if you're using him in a Pyro team, but those really aren't as recommended. Keep in mind, as an on-field DPS, he typically wants the best combination of main stats and subsets you can give him, so lots of crit and attack, so it's fine to do 2-piece 2-piece if the overall stats he gets are much better than trying to force a 4-piece set. 
And as far as main stats on his circlet, you want to give him a crit rate or crit damage circlet. For his goblet, you want to give him an animo damage goblet. For his sands, you want to give him an attack percent sands. For his talent priority, you want to level his normal attack first, and then his elemental skill, and then his elemental burst. Yow Yow! Yow Yow is a healing support, and you can either build her as a total healer, or you can give her some more offensive stats to make her a support in a bloom team with someone like Nilu. For her weapons, you want to give her a Favonius Lance, but if you don't have one of those, you can give her a Black Tassels, which increases her HP percent and thus her healing. And if you want to go for a more Bloom support, more offensive related Yao Yao, you can give her a Moon Piercer or the Katane Cross Spear. For her artifact set, you almost always want to run a 4-piece Deepwood Memory set on her, but you can also run a 4-piece Tenacity of the Millilith set or a 4-piece Instructor set. For her artifacts, you want to run a Healing Bonus Headpiece, an HP% percent Goblet, and an HP or an Energy Recharge Sands. While you can run Triple Elemental Mastery on her artifact main stats to help increase her reaction damage, Yayo really is made to be a healer, and that's where her best use is right now. For her talent priorities, you want to level her Elemental Burst first, and then her Elemental Skill, and you can ignore her normal attacks. Al Haytham Al Haytham is an on-field Dendro DPS. Al Haytham does very well in Spread and Hyper Bloom teams. For his weapons, he can use a variety of 5 stars very well. His signature weapon, the Light of Foliar Incision, is his best weapon. However, the Primordial Jade Cutter, Mist Splitter, Haranka Paku Futsu, and Freedom Sworn are also very nice 5 star options. If you don't have any of those 5 stars, you can use something like to the Tokabu Shigure, which is the Umbrella Sword we got from the Inazuma event. Or you can also use the Black Sword, the Battle Pass weapon, or the Iron Sting as a free-to-play option that's also really nice. If you find that you need a lot more energy recharge on Elhatham, you can also give him the Sapwood Blade, but if you're going to make a crafted sword, I suggest making the Iron Sting for him. For artifact sets, you want to run a 4-piece Gilded Dream set on Elhatham, however this is provided that you have someone on the team with a 4-piece Deepwood Memories. It doesn't need to be Elhatham, it's better if it's someone else, but you really want someone on the team to have this for the extra Dendro Resistance Shred. However, if you don't have a good 4-piece Gilded Dream set, you can run a 2-piece Deepwood, 2-piece Emblem of the Severed Fate, or 2-piece EM, 2-piece EM set. Just choose two of those, whichever ones give you the best subsets overall. And if there is no one on your team to run a 4-piece Deepwood Memory set, then make sure to run that set on Alhatham because the Dendro Resistance Shred is very important. For his main stat priorities, you want to run a crit rate or crit damage circlet on him, and then a dendro damage goblet, and you want to run either an elemental mastery or an attack percent sands, but most of the time you're going to want to run an elemental mastery sands. The attack percent sands is here because he is very stat hungry, so it's easier to get an attack percent sands than it is to get a good elemental mastery sands. Again, you want to go for the overall combination of substats, but keep in mind that Elhatham is very hungry for elemental mastery, a little bit more so than attack percent. For his talent priority, you want to level up his elemental skill first, as it's where a majority of his damage comes from, and then you want to level up his normal attacks and his elemental burst equally. Dea. Dea does not have too many good options. She was seemingly designed to be an on-field DPS, but she doesn't do very well in that position at all. Most people have found that building her as a Burgeon character is better, although characters like Toma are a little bit better for Burgeon than Dea is. So for right now, we're going to talk about the Burgeon build, which might be one of the best ones you can make for her currently. For that, you want to use the Mailed Flower, which is the weapon we got from the Windbloom event that gives you Elemental Mastery and increases your attack and Elemental Mastery. And you can also give her the Makaira Aquamarine, the Blood Tainted Greatsword, the Rain Slasher, or the Favonius Greatsword. For artifact sets, since we're running her with Burgeon, you want to give her something like a 4-piece Flower of Paradise Lost set, or 4-piece Guild of Dreams, 
or a two-piece EM, two-piece EM set, and you can give her a four-piece Crimson Witch of Flames, but her personal damage is very low, so it's generally a little bit better to run her Burgeon with a lot of Elemental Mastery. For the Burgeon build, you want to build her with Elemental Mastery main stats on the Circlet, Goblet, and Sands. For her talent priorities, like Nilu and like Sucrose, her talent scalings don't really matter. The only thing that matters is her level and the amount of elemental mastery she has. But if you do want to level up her skills so that they don't hit like the absolute weakest things in the entire game, then level up her skill first, then her normal attacks, then her burst. Because Dea does not need or even really want to use her elemental burst to trigger Burgeon, you actually don't even need to level this up at all if you don't want to. As far as for making Dea an on-field or an off-field DPS, it's probably better to not try and do that. Her talent scalings are just so low and there's so many other problems with her kit that it's better to try and do that with another character. But if you want to make Dea a tank, you can just give her a bunch of HP percent, HP percent circlet, goblet, and sands, and an HP percent greatsword, and just make her soak as much damage as possible. And while the Burgeon build is much better, this HP percent tanky build will work as just a damage soak for the rest of your characters, especially early in the game. Animo Traveler. For the Animo Traveler, 5-star weapons like the Freedom Sworn, Primordial Jade Cutter, Mist Splitter are all really good options. However, you can also use things like the Sacrificial Sword and Iron Sting to great effect as well. For artifacts, you want to run a 4-piece Viridescent Veneer set, but you can also use a 2-piece Animo Damage bonus, 2-piece Elemental Mastery, 2-piece Noblesse Oblige, or 2-piece Attack Percent set, and you can pick any of the two, just whichever ones give you the best substats. For the main stat priorities, if you're going with the 4-piece Viridescent Veneer set, you want to use Elemental Mastery on the Circlet, Goblet, and Sand, so you have triple Elemental Mastery. But if you're using a 2-piece, two 2-piece two set, then you want to use a Crit Rate or a Crit Damage Circlet, an Animo Damage Goblet, and either an Attack Percent or an Energy Recharge Sands. For talent priorities, you want to level the Animo Traveler's skill first, and then their elemental burst. If they're an EM focused swirling character, you actually don't need to level their talents at all as EM does not care about talent damage scalings, so you can do that if you're choosing to run them for Peace Viridescent with all elemental mastery. The Geo Traveler. For the Geo Traveler, you want to run them with your best offensive weapon. And usually for 5 stars, that's something like the Primordial Jade Cutter, Mist Splitter, Harangapaku Futsu, even Aquila Favonia is nice, and also Skyward Blade has some uses too. For 4 star and free to play options, the Amanoma Kageuchi, the 4 star craftable sword from Inazuma, is really nice, the Black Cliff Long Sword is also quite good, and the Favonius and Sacrificial Swords are also very nice. For artifact sets, the Geo Traveler has quite a bit of options, but typically you want to run some sort of two piece, two piece set, like two piece Noblesse Oblige, two piece Archaic Petra, two piece Archaic Petra with some sort of two piece attack percent set. You could also run a four piece Emblem of the Severed Fate set, or you could do two piece Noblesse, two piece attack percent, or you could do two piece attack, two piece attack. There's quite a lot of options. As far as the main stats on these artifacts, you want to look for a crit rate or crit damage circlet, a geo damage goblet, and an attack percent sands, as the geo traveler is much more offensively oriented than the other traveler versions. For their talent level priority, their skill and burst have the same priority, so you can level them in concert, and you don't have to level their normal attacks. The Electro Traveler the Electro Traveler is a support for an on-field character that can help recharge your on-field character's energy, but they themselves are very energy hungry. For this reason, it's a really good idea to run the Electro Traveler with a Favonia Sword or a Sacrificial Sword. You can also use something like the Skyward Blade, and if you don't have that, you can use the Sky Strider Sword, which is a 3-star weapon, especially if you're early in the game. For artifact sets, the 4-piece Noblesse Oblige is perfectly fine for them, however you could also run the 4-piece Emblem of the Severed Fate for a little more energy recharge, or even a 4-piece Instructor set if you want a little bit more elemental mastery for your whole team. 
And of course, since they are a very energy hungry character, you can run a two piece energy recharge, two piece energy recharge, like a two piece emblem and two piece exiles on them for even more energy recharge. For their artifact main stats, you want to use a crit rate or crit damage circlet, an electro damage goblet, and an energy recharge sands. However, very much like a character like Faruzan, the main stats on artifacts really aren't very important. The overall amount of energy recharge is what's most important, so make sure to have a lot of that so that you can use their burst off cooldown. For the Electro Traveler's talent priorities, you want to level their skill first and then their elemental burst, and you can disregard leveling their normal attacks. The Dendro Traveler for the Dendro Traveler, if you have the 5 star weapon the Freedom Sworn, that's very nice on them, but if you don't, the Favonia Sword is highly recommended, also the Sacrificial Sword is quite good on them, and the Sapwood Blade is a nice free to play option if you don't have any of those other options. For artifact sets, you want to run a 4 piece Deepwood Memory set on them, but you can also run a 4 piece Noblesse Oblige, a 4 piece Instructors, a 4 piece Guild of Dreams, or a 4 piece Exile set. The purpose of the Dendro Traveler is to be a support character that consistently applies Dendro to the enemies while also supporting the rest of your team. For this reason, you can run the Dendro Traveler with a few different main stats on their artifacts. The typical type of setup you would do would be either a crit rate or crit damage circlet, a dendro damage goblet, and an energy recharge or attack percent sands, but the energy recharge sands is usually a little bit more valuable as it will help you maintain your elemental burst and use it off cooldown. However, it's also perfectly fine to run a triple EM main set, elemental mastery circlet, goblet, and sands on the dendro traveler. But just like the Electro Traveler, the main stats really are not very important for the Dendro Traveler. The most important thing for them is a very high amount of energy recharge so that you can consistently use your burst off cooldown. For talent priority, you want to level the Dendro Traveler's elemental burst first and then their elemental skill, and you don't have to level the normal attacks at all. And that's how to build all the characters in Genshin Impact currently available. Make sure to use this video as a reference guide and come back to it as you need it. There's a lot of information and don't expect to absorb it all at once. Also remember to use the timestamps to find a specific character or a specific characters that you want to know how to build. And if you have questions about how to put together a specific team, what teams would be best for you, and how to do specific rotations, make sure to catch me on stream at twitch.tv slash sharkhart, that's S-H-A-R-K-H-3, ART. I stream mornings and Eastern Standard Time on Twitch, so if you do have personalized questions about what team you should build with the characters you have, how to do rotations, what weapons you should use, what artifacts you should use, anything like that, then make sure to check me out on Twitch and I would be happy to help answer your questions. I found that getting help live is one of the best ways for me to help someone individually, and everyone in chat also wants to help, and they can be another great resource for you too. And of course, as new characters come out, I'll tell you how to build those characters before this video gets updated again. So if you get a new character that is not listed here and you want to know how to build them, come check me out live and ask me how to build them there, because I'll have a good sense of how to build just about any character that comes out almost immediately after they come out. But until then, know that I love you, stay awesome, may order guide you, and I can't wait to see you soon everyone.